How does the vision phase through solid objects? Let's shed some light on this. Science Behind the Vision My favorite superhero movie of all time has got to be Avengers Age of Ultron. There are tons of things I love about that movie, but one of my favorite, most standout features is definitely the introduction of the Vision into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's got one of my favorite character designs, the scenes with him are always great, and he looked really, really good in the marketing. Speaking of the Vision, one of the coolest things that fans love about him is his ability to phase through solid objects, like here, here, and here. But how does he do this? What is the science of phasing through solid walls? Ultimately, the process of phasing is embedded within the system of quantum mechanics. And yes, that is to say that phasing does happen according to quantum mechanics. It's a phenomenon we call quantum tunneling. To understand quantum tunneling, we need to know a few terms first. These are going to seem irrelevant at first, but stick around, because it does connect. From the start of the universe right up to now, basically everything is composed of what we call particles. In terms of physics, particles are bits of matter that are smaller than even atoms. These are sometimes also referred to as subatomic particles, due to their size. But basically what you need to know is that when we're talking about the stuff that makes up atoms and the smallest things in the universe like atoms, we're talking about particles. They've been around since, assumingly, the beginning of time. Heck, all of us are made up of tiny particles that have been floating around space forever. In that sense, we're basically made of recycled stardust. Now, particles in quantum mechanics are a pretty strange concept. We've yet to learn everything about them, but we've been able to gather some information regarding them. The two most important things we need to know about them for their application to quantum tunneling is that particles will seemingly act differently when being observed compared to when not being observed, and that particles not being observed are represented by wavelengths, or more technically, wave functions. Think of wave functions as basically the same thing as an audio wave. We can't actually see sound, so we use the wave and its height to represent when the sound is loud, when it's quiet, or even if it's not there. Particles in quantum mechanics work in a very similar fashion. So, we have a particle not being observed. According to theories like Schrodinger's cat, for example, this particle is in a state of quantum superposition. For those of you who don't know, Schrodinger's cat theory states that if we were to put a cat into a box and wait until we assume the cat has died, but not open the box, the cat has entered a state of quantum superposition. The cat is in a state of being both alive and dead, and the particles that make up the cat will only assume one role or the other when forced to, which is what the theory states happens when we observe particles. Although not this theory in particular, the idea of particles behaving differently based on observation is backed up by multiple scientific theories and experiments, like the double slit experiment. So now that we know everything we need to know about particles and their wave functions, let's get back to our example particle. Let's say that, since we're not observing this particle, it is in quantum superposition. That means that the only way we could try to accurately guess the location of this single particle is by measuring the wave function it's giving off. Now, here's something interesting. Based on the chart, we can see that the particle is probably right around here. But look at this right here. You see that book standing right there? Look at the wave functions the particle gives off. They pass through the book, yes, but their size decreases significantly inside of it. This is something I like to call quantum wave decay. We measure particle wave functions in numerical values. The bigger the wave function, the higher the number that represents it. Here, we see a significant decrease in those numbers. In fact, it approaches zero. But despite the obstacle it's going through, the wave actually will not reach a full zero. If we were to graph this phenomenon, it would look like this. The curved line we see here is our decrease in wave function numerical value. And as we see here, the line seems to touch and run across what we call the x-axis, or the line of y equals zero. This right here is the y-axis, and its height represents the height of the numbers we see in our wave function. However, if we look closer, we see that the line actually never reaches y equals zero. It just gets infinitely closer. This line of y equals zero, therefore, is called an asymptote, a line that is approached but never touched. So what does this mean for phasing? Well, now that we know the wave function acts like a line with an asymptote and can actually never reach zero by going through objects, this means that while the particle is still likely inside this cluster we see here, the probability of it being on the other side of the book or even inside the book does exist. 
Although the particle can start from the point here, it can somehow end up on the complete opposite side of the book. This is the phenomenon we call quantum tunneling. This particle can basically travel right through the book and out the other side. The probability of it doing this can be affected by the value of the wave functions. Sometimes, we may even have a wave function that is highest inside the book. Whether or not the particle passes through is also affected by the size of the object it would have to travel through. The less object there is, the higher the wave functions are on the other side of it, thus the higher the probability is of this particle traveling through the object, and the same goes the other way around. The more of an object there is, the lower the wave functions are on the other side of it, and the probability of the particle passing through decreases. So phasing through solid walls is possible through quantum tunneling, according to quantum mechanics. It just happens really, really rarely. The actual chance of these particles choosing to pass through the object is fairly low. Experiments like the double slit experiment even show how, if we tried this with multiple particles at once, even if they have the same wave function and object conditions, not all of them will go through the object. Heck, it might even happen that none of them go through. So if the Vision can control his physical body to go through objects at will, he must be controlling that probability somehow. How is that even possible? Again, not all the facts are known, but there are a few key observations that have been made that are really interesting. To put it simply, it is possible that some particles also act like their own wave functions. This theory was most famously proposed by Albert Einstein. Einstein theorized that light particles were able to behave as both particles and wave functions. Funnily enough, this theory is one of the bricks in the building we call quantum mechanics. What's also interesting about it is that it has led to the possibility of solidified light. <laughs> Let me explain. In 2013, scientists at Harvard decided to conduct an experiment that could revolutionize how we look at light. They took a photon, which is a particle that makes up light, and fired it at cooled down atoms of rubidium, which is a type of metal. Upon their first observation, they found the usual. The photon passed through the atoms, slowing down as it went, similar to how light refracts when passing through glass. However, in the second part of the experiment, they fired two photons into the rubidium atoms, and they found that the photons left the atoms together, in a line at matching rates. It was as though the two photons had bonded. Indeed, this is basically what happens. These scientists, through this experiment, were able to combine two photons to produce something very similar to a solid molecule. Through that experiment, we got a glimpse as to what solidified light may be like, and how we could make it. So, you might be asking, where exactly is this going? Well, look at it like this. If Einstein's theory about how light is both a particle and a wave function, which is backed up by a few other experiments, is true, and the solid light experiment is anything to go by, it's not too far out to say that it's possible that photons could be bonded together to create a body of solid light. If the Vision's body is made up of solid light, it's possible that his mind has control over the light, meaning he can control his own particles and wave functions. That means that he would have control over his own probability to travel through solid objects. The Vision would be able to control himself on a quantum level, and would have the ability to manipulate the probability of his own particles passing through solid objects, resulting in his power to phase through solid walls. So there we have it. Vision is able to phase through walls using the theoretical abilities of solid light and the concept of quantum tunneling. Not only that, but we covered how phasing happens in real life, even if it is on a subatomic scale. Quantum mechanics is definitely an interesting field. Knowing that particles can pass through solid objects, that solid light could exist, and that light itself may be far more complex than we thought, paints a perplexing vision of the future. Hey guys, hope you all enjoyed that episode of Science Behind Superheroes. This was really interesting too because I learned a lot about quantum tunneling and quantum mechanics in this one, and I actually really liked researching it, and I really liked the Vision as well. He's actually one of my favorite superheroes, and again, he's pretty close to my favorite superhero design, so I mean, that's just really cool to be able to do a video on that. And again, sticking more to these, like, based on a superpower rather than a deeper aspect sort of thing. And I think that's also very interesting as well, and I think it's more fun for me to do, and I'm glad that you guys like these a whole lot. The Venom video has done really well compared to my newer videos. So yeah, I'm glad you guys liked those a whole lot, and I hope you guys liked this video. If you guys did, make sure to like and leave a comment as to what superhero or supervillain you guys want to see me do next, and have a good week, guys. Next week comes my Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 special video, so stay tuned.